Good morning. Welcome to Elon Community Church, United Church of Christ. If you're visiting with us today, we're so very glad that you're here. We want to know that you're here. Um, those of you in the sanctuary can put some information on the insert in the bulletin and put it uh, in our offering plates that are out in the narthex here and in the hallway here. Um, it is a little warm in here today. We got in here this morning and realized that the air condition's not working. So we are hoping uh, that it doesn't get too hot. It depends on how hot Randy's sermon is this morning. <laughs> um, just a few announcements. Vacation Bible School is going to start next Sunday evening. Uh, we're looking forward to it. We're having a kickoff at 5 p.m., we are doing it this year with First Baptist of Elon, and we are so excited about it. Um, I still could use a few volunteers to help with children, um, and if you're willing to do that, there's a place on the insert in the bulletin that you can put some, um, put what you're willing to do next week, but we are looking forward. We also need children, and if you know of any children, have grandchildren, have neighbors, please let them know about our, um, our Vacation Bible School. It's Passport to Peace. And we are really looking forward to this theme. It's got some stories that you usually don't get in Vacation Bible School, and I think the children are going to have a lot of fun and learn a lot next week. They had a successful Habitat for Humanity build yesterday with our four volunteers that went. I saw some pictures on uh, Facebook, and thanks for those who participated. Our next participation Saturday is June the 25th. So if you're willing to do that, please um, let us know, email the office and let us know that you're willing to help out. Musical talents. If you've got any kind of musical talents, Stephen Futrell has some uh, slots to fill for this summer, so please see him following worship. On June 30th, there's going to be a dinner and a movie um, in the CLC sponsored by the Green Committee. It's youth versus the youth versus government, um, and it's uh, going to, uh, Randy's going to say a little bit about it when he gets up in a minute. With all that said, I'm going to turn it over to Randy to talk about the strength in the church and, um, and this movie. I actually have a couple quick announcements. The first one is, is that um, you've been hearing about the refugee resettlement. Things are really moving in a, in a positive direction for us to get a family. Many of you have already signed up to volunteer. And that means even if you're just going to help with one ride or you might help in some small way, but what's going to happen is once we get that critical number, and by the way, we've already reached that, so thank you. But if you haven't volunteered, please let us know because we are setting a training time and it's going to be by Zoom and in person, uh, and we're going to have the leader from Church World Service actually come and do the training. It lasts about an hour, hour and a half, and so we're trying to get a, a time set up so that will happen. And then once that's done, we are literally ready to receive a family. So this is all happening much more quickly than we, w than we might have even thought. So I'm, we're excited about it and uh, want to make sure that you know that, that this is something that the church has been hoping for, and we don't know what, what family we're going to give. If they're from Afghanistan, if they're from Ukraine, they might even be from another, uh, another country as well, because Church World Service is now seeing more refugees coming in, uh, and, the, and the government is now accepting more refugees to come in. So, so we'll see where that, where that goes. So I just want to make sure, you, if you haven't had a chance to sign up, just simply call the office, leave a message, email us at the office uh, email, which is elancommunitychurch at gmail.com. Uh, just let us know very quickly, hey, me, I'm, I'm volunteering, my, my husband and I are volunteering, my wife and I are volunteering, the whole family's volunteering, it doesn't matter, but we just need to have a, a rough estimate, we're going to then give you the, the training date. Uh, the other thing about this movie that I wanted to say is this is a, a chance for us to be together around the issue of climate change and what an exciting way to think about this. And I hope that some of our young people who are watching today hear this as well. But this is a, a show about young people who are suing governments around the world, who are standing up to governments around the world saying it is time 
it is time for you to do something. And it's an inspiring, inspiring episode that we'll have to get together. So I hope that we're a, a diverse age group when we come on June 30th as well. So please sign up for that. And then finally, I'm just going to say there are no special envelopes today for our special offering called Strength in the Church. Um, but you can put it as, as a note on your check. You can, we have a, a category on online giving that says Strength in the Church. And it is going to help churches around the country that are already needing and requiring re uh, reinvestment or revisioning and then there are some there are many churches that are starting and a lot of churches are actually burgeoning around us we just don't know about but sometimes they need a little extra help so I hope that you will want to be a part of that we receive offering today and well as in the next few weeks and we'll be sending that in to um, the United Church of Christ so with all of that said let us now address our hearts and minds now to the worship service Thank you. If you are able, please rise and join me in the reading of the call of worship. Creation declares your glory and your creative love. Merciful God, we enter worship acknowledging the one who creates, brings salvation and grace, and leads us to his love. Peace, endurance, character, and hope are gifts. Mysterious God.
please join me in the prayer for transformation and new life. Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, we confess that we do not always heed the wisdom you impact. We turn toward other marks and means of validation rather than towards you. We remain in awe of our own creation while devouring and disseminating yours because we know the difference. Continue to call us to pray and to surprise and delight us at your magnificence and majesty. May we always be in awe at your glory and humbled by your nearness. Let our character be shaped for the hope and reflect the Receive the peace extended to us from the God of grace, who embodied and ex an experienced who, who, who invited us to share glory of the resurrected life in which we were made new and whole. In the name of the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. Amen. May the peace be of God be with you. And also with you. Share this peace with our world and all of our neighbors. I, I get too close to it, I think. No, 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 You may be seated. As an act of church expression and a declaration of faithful witness, we are going to repeat, and many of you may or may not know that this statement exists, but this is our open and affirming statement that was accepted by the congregation some time ago, and it is read once every so often during our worship to remind us of this, and couldn't figure out a better time than this Trinity Sunday, as well as this month, uh, for some known as Pride Month. So it was very important for us to be able to share this today. So as you remain seated, let's read this together. We, the members of Elon Community Church, United Church of Christ, believing that everyone is created by God, and that we are called as Christians to be an inclusive fellowship, declare ourselves to be an open and affirming congregation. We are many members with the right of private judgment and the liberty of conscience, and we celebrate that we are one body in Christ. We believe that God's love, Christ's church, and the Holy Spirit's power are for all people, regardless of their color, gender, age, ability, economic situation, sexual orientation, gender identity, or gender expression, or any other distinction. We see these differences not as barriers, but as blessings, and we welcome all people into the full life and ministry of this church. We will, with God's help, live by this commitment in our actions as a faithful congregation. Thank you. The first scripture lesson is Romans 5, verses 1 through 5. You can find that on page 151 of New Testament of your Pew Bible. 
Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to these great grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces hope, and hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been has been pouring into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Through the scripture, God is still speaking. I don't see any children in here with us this morning, so we will not do little children since they're not coming up today. But the little children that are on the screen and listening to Pastor Sharon this morning, this is a Sunday called Trinity Sunday. And what do you think that means? Well, first of all, tri, do you have a tricycle? Have you had a tricycle as a little? That meant three wheels. So tri means three things. And that means then when we talk about the Trinity, we're talking about God in three different names. Kind of like, you know, do you have, like, my name is mom to my children, grandma Sharon to my granddaughters, and I'm aunt Sharon to a lot of nieces and nephews. So that's three different names. Well, God is kind of like that. God has three names, and we kind of have God as a parent. Um, in the Bible, it calls God as a father, but father, he could be a father or God could be a mother. So God is a parent. Or God is a big thing that we really don't know a lot about. God is kind of a mystery, but God is big and God is everywhere. And then we think about Jesus, and we say that Jesus was God's son. So that's the second way that we can name God, through Jesus Christ. And then last Sunday was Pentecost, and we celebrated something called the Holy Spirit. And that's kind of... You know, we talk about the wind and the fire and the spirit of God being among us. So that's kind of like something that we can't see, but it's like in the wind and something that we feel in our heart. And these are hard things for even us adults to understand. But we celebrate God in many ways, in the many forms that God presents God's self. And it is important to celebrate God and the bigness of God, and the fact that God is in everything. is God is in the beauty of the nature, in the beaches that you'll probably travel to or the mountains that you'll go to. God is in this room, in this congregation, and lives in the hearts of the people. God is everywhere, and God is in different forms. And we celebrate God because of that. Let's say a prayer about that. Gracious God, we love you in the many forms that you present to us. And, oh, God, we love you. We love you, and we show our love each day as we go about with the people we meet and in the actions that we do, we present how Jesus taught us to be and in the spirit that lives in us, that spirit of love that you give us. And we all say amen. Our gospel text today is found once again in the gospel according to John. And as we come to this second Sunday in Pentecost, actually it's the first Sunday after Pentecost though, it is known as Trinity Sunday. And so you'll notice that the scriptures try to find those places where there is this at least acknowledgement that there is this three. And I'm glad that you shared three, Sharon, but I remember one other one. I think it was your granddaughter who was talking about you, and she said, uh, you own the church. Yeah, so uh, she's the priest that owns the church. And so, so I wanted to let everyone know that other expression, too. So we're going to be worshiping. I mean, we're going to be reading from John chapter 16, once again, still in the... Uh, in the farewell discourses that Jesus shares as he's teaching his disciples. And one of the neatest things that I read as, we, as I prepared for the sermon was that this is 
several chapters of Jesus trying to share with his disciples how much he loves them and about the love that they not only receive, but the love that they are called upon to share. And so here are these, these brief words from chapter 16, verses 12 through 15. If you'd like to follow along in the Pew Bible, it's on page 108 in the New Testament portion. It begins perfectly here. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you what the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. A little while and you will no longer see me. And again in a little while and you will see me. Thus ends our scripture reading. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, today I just want to um, kind of bring to a sense of closure, even though the Trinity Sunday is kind of a beginning, if you will, of the Pentecost season. It really is, in a sense, a kind of a rounding out of all that we've been talking about in the church year. The way that the church year is designed is it speaks about the life and the ministry and the actions of Jesus. It starts at his birth and Advent and Christmas and then goes through all of the different seasons. And we are now going to be coming into, starting next week, a, t- a time called common time or ordinary time. It's a time in which we have more of a freedom from the, the story, if you will, and we can really start to explore in the scriptures and do different things. But this is kind of a, a rounding out, a bringing together of all that we've talked about, of God who has created us, God who in Jesus redeems us, and God who in the Holy Spirit now leads and guides us. That there are so many ways of speaking about this triunity, this trinity, that we, we really can't say it all in one sermon or in one time or completely define what the Trinity means. In fact, I've had fun over the years, uh, as just Pastor Sharon just did, trying to talk to the kids because we know that when we're talking to the kids, we're talking to you too. You know, the Trinity, we might think to ourselves, yeah, we got it figured out. You know, three persons, but indivisible. In other words, completely one together. That one of, the, one of the criticisms that has been uh, alleged through the years is that we believe in multiple gods, you know, that we have three gods. We have a Father and a Son and a Holy Spirit, or we have a Creator, Redeemer, and Holy Ghost, or there are so many different words and ways that we share that. So I'm just wondering for you what it means. How does it, how does it have meaning to you today? Is it inspirational to even talk about it in our church as a sermon. You know, what does it mean to walk away and say, oh, thank God, I know what a trinity is now. Some of you came and have worshipped in Unitarian churches. And you know, Unitarianism basically rose out of a, of a way of, of trying to e- even once again, more f- in, a more, in a bigger way, try to figure out what this all means. Is God only three? Is God many expressions? Is it that we just limited it to three? Or three is kind of a magic number in the scripture? Does it have a kind of a, of a sense about completeness or wholeness within that framework? Maybe it might be better today to walk away with more questions than answers to try to understand Trinity. But still, it's best when you remember that the children give us the best definitions. And I remember one time I was doing a children's sermon 
And I said, what's a trinity? And they said, that's the name of a church down the street. <laughs> yeah, that's sometimes good enough. Some churches name their whole name after it because it does seem to have something that resonates with us. And what is it that resonates with us? What is it about this idea? And by the way, it's not an idea that you can easily get to in the Bible. If we remember when the Bible was written, this was at a time when people were discerning and understanding what the leading and guiding of all that they had received and all that they had heard was about. They were still kind of figuring it out, if you will. The Apostle Paul, one of the first writers in Scripture, really speaks and struggles with the idea of what this all means, trying to help us expand our thinking. In fact, the Apostle Paul, in this little brief portion of his letter to the Romans, which is really considered one of his most important letters, because it's one of those where he brings together a lot of those teachings that he had shared in all of those smaller letters or other letters to the churches that he had been with. He's trying to speak to a people about something that has always been troubling to him. And we're going to see signs of that even this summer as we talk about and read from Paul's letters. For Paul has seen that there is a bigger picture here than what we often want to bring and give. And what's a part of that? Well, he talks about suffering. That even in our sufferings, we can see God. He also uses this common word over and again called boasting. He always talks about boasting, and that boasting is always something that we know means for us bragging or at least a sense of understanding that we've got things figured out or that we can lift up something and really lift it up in such a way that we're, we feel confident about it. And for Paul, he always goes back to the idea that we can boast for nothing except for God. God is what we lift up. And so even in our sufferings, even in those things that we try to avoid, God is there. And those sufferings produce, in a sense, he kind of almost lines it out, but almost an, a, another kind of multiple expression. But a sense that those sufferings lead to endurance, and endurance to character. Well, I guess that sounds really good, especially if you're an Olympic athlete, because you understand that. You know, after you run enough or you exercise and do the particular thing enough, you have to suffer to get there. Or maybe if you're playing piano or organ or singing, you have to suffer to get through to all those places because you have to be able to ultimately endure and you have to understand all that you've done and it builds a sense of character because it centers you on what you know and what you can do. So it almost sounds like it kind of works together in this neat little pattern. I don't see that in Paul's letter. What I see instead is almost like the Trinity, almost a, a sense that these three things have a relationship, but they are still in and of themselves important. But all in all, they come from who God is. And that's ultimately what we're talking about here. Who is God so that we may understand who we are? To describe in a very, well, in its greatest essence, what it means to be here, what it means to be alive, what it means to exist even now, and who God is in the midst of that. One of the greatest paintings, of course, you know, is this in the Sistine Chapel, Michelangelo, you know, with the finger of God touching the human finger. 
Spirit of God touching the human spirit. I don't know if that painting moves you when you see it, but in a sense, the description of who God is seems to be a way of helping us to understand how that touching takes place. That in these descriptions of who God is through God creator, God parent, God in Jesus the Christ who is one with the Father as John speaks about, and that the Spirit is sharing all that has already been given, but sharing it and continuing to share it in, a, in an integral relationship so that we might hear it, experience it, be touched by it. It's almost like that song, you know, I just called to say I love you. There's like three ways that I've shown that love. And I believe there's so many more than three. But we accept the three. We call it a mystery of faith. We call it a way of relating to God. And that's the question and the challenge I want to always leave you with. What is our greatest gift? It is knowing that God is here. That God is with us. That God is around us. That God is leading us. That God is shaping us. That God is giving to us out of great concern because other parts of John say that. God so loved the world. God so loved. And in another part of John, in that same words, when he's saying, I've given you this, but I can't give it all to you right now. You're going to need a spirit to lead you. In other words, God loves us so much that God knows we can't understand it all, and it's not our job to understand every little bit of it but to be led by a God who continues to allow us to discern and to see what is about to take place, to see and to know that in what we do and how we live, God is guiding us, that God cares. Now, maybe that doesn't sound too complex. Maybe it almost sounds scary to some of you. But ultimately, there is no other reason to understand who God is if we can't first also understand ourselves and understand in the midst of our own sufferings in those needs for hope that we have in the ways that we live our lives and decide who we will be and how we will be Boy, that talks a lot about character. And it talks a lot about what God needs to be in order for us to follow in that way. It's, it's a way of being touched at the manger at Christmas. It's a way of being touched at Epiphany when we see the gifts being given by the Magi when we see Jesus with a dove descending upon him at his baptism. It's the way we see when we see and feel and experience Jesus' teachings that touch us and remind us of who we are. The way we are touched when we stand at the foot of the cross experiencing the crucifixion only to be led to a garden to a place where there's an empty tomb and having been so led even in our fear knowing that there is a spirit of peace a spirit of hope that is with us in the midst of what we 
do and say and live and love and hope and follow the challenges that the world gives to us, challenges that are based upon brokenness and pain, the ideas of how we understand the world around us and live in the midst of that. All of this comes together in this moment. How we are changed and transformed. How we are shaped is who we are in the midst of a God who is finding ways to come to us and will continue to find ways to reach us and to know us, and even like the painting, touch us. What we take away is believing. The Gospel of John talks about it all the time. Believing and continuing to believe and to be shaped by these things. To continually know that the many ways and the many expressions that God brings to us are there for us to be able to utilize and to live within and to live into. So what does it mean for you? It's not just a lesson in theology. It is the greatest gift that we have to live out that we have to receive and to share. It is the greatest gift of love that will always be here. And now, who are we? Amen. I have a few concerns to share. We continue to keep Sherry um, in our prayers. Uh, she will be going to rehab soon. We remember Lynn Horn's family. Uh, her sister-in-law, Tammy, passed away last week, and her service was this past week. So please continue to remember her family in your prayers. Um, Randy did a graveside service for Ann Cunningham yesterday, and the flowers here are placed in her memory along with her parents, and we welcome her sisters that are with us this morning. Um, Jean Farrell is having surgery on Tuesday, and we want to lift him up, up in prayer also. And of course, we have our others that we are continuing to, uh, to pray for who have ongoing concerns. So let us go to God in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this beautiful summer day. We thank you for those that are gathered in this space and out that are watching and, and sharing with us in this worship in another place. Oh God, we have those in our congregation that we continue to remember and those that have ongoing concerns that need your love, your strength, your touch, and your healing. God, we lift up Sherry and Jean. We lift up Lynn, Lynn's family and Anne's family, and we pray that you will be with them each, holding them and loving them and helping them along the struggles that they have now. Oh God, we pray for those in this community, in this state, in this nation, in this world that are struggling in many ways through loss of life, through war, through famine, and through any, all the struggles of daily life that are so showing their face now. 
We know, God, that you're a God that it will show your presence. Your, your spirit will be among them, even in their struggle. God, help us as we go from this place in our daily struggles in life that to know that your presence is there, that your, your son Jesus has taught us the way in which to live, in which to love, in which to pray, and to be in the spirit that lives inside of us, be with us and give us peace, and help us to show that God in three persons inside of us through our love, through our actions, and through our prayers. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name who taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It is time of it is a time of giving, and we ask that you give. Um, again, we have offering plates in the narthex and in the hallway. You can give online, and we pray. Um, that these will be a blessing to this faith community, to this community, and to the world. Gracious God, may these gifts be a blessing to your community, to your world, 
and to everyone in need. Amen. I don't know if this is a new hymn for many of you, but we really wanted to sing this today, and so I know that uh, uh, Joy will help us find our way through this, but uh, um, just think about this wonderful sense of how God's presence is with us as we celebrate this Trinity Sunday. Well, as I said, next week we begin what we call Ordinary Time, and so we thank this wonderful choir for leading us through this time as we get ready now for Ordinary Time, and we can't wait for when you come back in uh, late August, and we're so thankful for all that you've done, and so thankful for our leaders and our guides through that process as well. Thank you once again. Next week, we're having a new holiday we're going to recognize, Juneteenth. Now, it's also Father's Day. Dad, we're not going to ignore you, okay? But we are actually going to be observing the holiday for the first time, and I'm excited about that. And so I hope that when we return next week, we will remember that we have a new voice and always a voice of witness to share. And we will do that in the many ways that we can. For you have come to us, O God, in your many ways. And you have led us, you surround us, and you even save us when you have shown us all these things. You have now touched us. Go forth knowing that we are God's people, knowing that we are changed, knowing that we have much to do. Go forth in the peace and hope and love of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Walk with me, sir. Amen.